Rhythm readers, I've got something to show you. Come this way. I'll hand you over to Kaz, who will uh, talk you through this setup. Hello. Over to you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, it's Kaz. <laughs> um, I'm going to just show you for the first part of, of everything is uh, my setup that I have going on here, which is quite obscure looking, but basically like me anyway. I'm obscure shaped anyway. So, um, so I'm going to talk uh, through the the drums that I'm using on here. It's an acoustic kit, um, and on here we have a Tama Star Classic, Babinga. I haven't used this in a while, so I thought I'd just it would be really great for this sort of music that we're run, uh, working on. And um, the idea on this station is more about playing things like break beats, and you know, just I like to emulate emulate um, those sounds in real life so I just wanted this kind of stack kind of broken sound um, so I just put symbols on top of each other and <laughs> hence the birth of a stack um, so I'm going to look from this side so let's go from the left so I'm going to sit down so it's a bit easier so here I have a <coughs> 12 inch remix hi-hat and these are quite ancient but they're just wonderful they sound really great they're really cutting. Um, you know, I remember use, uh, seeing Zach Danziger using these when he was uh, uh, campaigning these cymbals. Um, and I just fell in love with the sound and I just had to find one desperately. So remix hi-hat on the left. Um, over here, I have a combination of two cymbals. So I have underneath, I have a um, Oriental uh, China trash, which is just a Mini China that Zildjian came up with in the effects series. And on the top, I have a 10-inch A Custom EFX. So just the symbol alone is really quick, it's sharp, and putting them together, you get this really nice, quick, kind of trashy, hatty thing. Um, just below it, I have a uh, FX stacker, which was released last year, which was, I, I fell in love with them, and I, I actually, if you've watched my Zildjian live performance, <laughs> I had a, a larger one, which was a 12 inch. These are really good because you can use them as hi-hats, you can use them as stacks on top like this. Um, but this is really cutting for electronic music as well. So you get that nice bite. Um, very, very sharp, very, very sharp. And affordable. Get yourself an effects stack right now from Zildjian. Do it. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> Over here, uh, above it, is another is a, another little stack here called a Trashformer. Um, underneath is um, the Trashformer itself, and on top, I just decided to put like a six-inch um, splash. Uh, again, it's just short, so so when you're going through the spectrum, I just thought, you know, having different voicings, you know, you, and you can play around with it. And um, on my right. Um, I decided to to use this again. This is called a breakbeat ride, but which was this is kind of the the later version of it, and they've called it the uptown ride. Apparently, uptown, go figure. But I like to think of it as the remix ride <laughs> or the breakbeat ride. Um, it's an 18 inch. It's very thin. Um, also underneath we have a um, symbol that I have had since I was. 16 years old, which I bought from a shop um, in Bournemouth, <laughs> a music shop in Bournemouth. And it's never cracked, it's never failed. So I'm about to show this to you. It's uh, an Oriental Trash Crash. Those were the, these were like back in the day, they stopped doing these. And I've got like the Paul Francis from Zildjian, like a phenomenal symbol maker, um, really dear friend. And he's kind of made updated versions of matching these with bigger sizes, but this has never, ever failed. Slightly warped, never crashed, never, never cracked, crashed, it's always crashed. Um, and that's just pretty much the symbol set up there. And usually I have it open and I'll, I'll probably just take it on and off just as a option to crash or stack it as well with the ride. Um, and over here we have a, um, a 12 inch snare, which is very uncommon for my kind of playing because 
12 inch is really good because it's more articulate. I have it tuned quite high. And it's a very inexpensive snare. So this is from the Club Jam series. Um, I just thought this would be perfect for this kind of uh, kind of gig. You know, this this sort of this sort of project is just it's good to have different types of snares that we all have here. So there'll be different depths, different tones, and I'm just going to explain here on my right at the 14-inch floor tom, and I'm using one of these. I've, I've you know. I really love this company. It's just a big fat snare drum, um, and there's something really special with using these things. Like you can dampen them, you can use them for jingles. Um, so this floor tom is just, you know, it has this really just sounds like a hi hat, sort of, <laughs> with some low frequencies, or as Andy states, uh, good for folk music. <laughs> Isn't that right, Pops? <laughs> so I did, and the, and the kick is a 20 inch. So for 20 for me really works well, as, especially when I'm trying to do more articulate drumming. Um, I, I, I usually use bigger sizes as well, but for this aesthetic as well, it's just a good, good size. Um, and overall everything works together and I'm in control of the playing. So that's the acoustic side of things. So I'm going to, pass it over to the godfather over there to andy over to you there you go well done cares well done yeah. um right so uh <laughs> here we are then so uh, yeah so i'm just gonna have a bit, a bit of an overview about what's what, what's going what's going on here and that is um we've we've all, we've all at any one point we've all got the ability to play each other's parts but um but the, so the way it's set up um either when when Kaz is playing the kit i'll be playing either um, keys and, and vocal samples, or you'll be playing the bass, or then we can swap around and I'm playing, playing the kit and they can swap around. So it's all, it's all in interchangeable. It all works via uh, Ableton and um, came up with this um, queuing system whereby I can queue up various uh, tracks, which are, they'll see with new tracks that are coming up. And um, so that um, the, 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 the bass at back in the day was one long, um, um, we, there, 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 there were no breaks in it, so it was very much like, like a like a DJ set. And I still wanted to ma maintain that. So, uh, so by this one, by, by by having this sort of queuing system, we can all be instantly knowing what's what's coming up and um, knowing what 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 the next tracks are, are going to be. Um, yeah, so various uh, foot controllers, just trying to make things as hands-on as possible. Not obviously not 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 build, not relying on looking looking at the computer, but just having. Stuff which you can just do, man, just manually just do do stuff on the fly. Do 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 loads of um, sound manipulation on that. Um, yeah, and just see see what, see what happens from there. And I'll pass it over to Ollie. <laughs> just to sort of carry on from what Andy was saying, um, you know, we, essentially you've got three three drum kits here, which are which they're they're all it, you've you've got your melodic area, which is if you go to the front of the rack. Everything you're seeing here, these pads that you've got here, you've got a mixture of roll, rolling pads. They're all, all those parts are designed to be played, stood up, playing melodic parts. And they run, well, first of all, they run into modules. So you'll see on the rack, you've got three Roland TD50 modules. Now, those send all the MIDI information that we need to the central hub, which is this rack we've got over here. And then Ableton tells those pads what MIDI notes um, that they they trigger and and that's how you know this central hub controls how 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 the MIDI is determined from 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 these three boxes effectively with with, with with the three stations you've got here and you'll also see that we've got three more modules as if three wasn't enough already <laughs> um, but no these this is the kind of drumming station so you've got three acoustic kits here you know um, I know Kaz has spoken about his and and each each one of us has decided has you know brought what brought what we like from what we use on, on, on lots of gigs and what we think that will work with, with this style of music. But you've also got these electronic stations here as well. So the four pads you're seeing um, from left to right at the back, uh, they're all controlled separately. And these these modules here, the TM6 Pro modules, all of our drum sounds, so all of our electronic you know, drum sounds are all coming from these modules. Um, so you're effectively, it looks, you're, you've got two independent rigs running running together 
running together, so, so to speak. So, um, yeah, like you say, I've, I've got Natal Walnut Originals acoustic kit here, selection of cymbals. Andy, he's got his setup, and you've got your acoustic element, which is one. Then you've got your electronic drumming element, which is element number two, which you see here. And element number three is the melodic element, um, which is all run down this central hub, effectively. But everything that you see runs runs into one box. So, yeah, in principle, I think that's what we're trying to achieve. <laughs> so. Don't forget the spanner. Oh yes, well we you need the spanner as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's been many trips to Screw Fix, as as we've been. Um, we we all have a habit of going to Screw Fix. I'm not going to lie. I think oh, I can speak for everyone when I say we we all love going to Screw Fix, and I think that's partially why you en we've ended up with a rig like this because, you know, this this is the best Meccano set you you can get in my opinion. So, so yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to come up with a, just. Um, a concept of some some sort of rack which you know had um, a sort of a, a look about it and struggled for, for ages just 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 think, thinking about a way to do it and it just and I just had this mad idea just came to me in the middle of the night about um, uh, using th three hoops so I went to my studio downstairs and got three ten inch uh, drum hoops and just cut cut um, cut, cut the skin out of it so it just end up with the hoops. And I put one on the one on, on the deck, and one going like that, and one going like that, and it all lined up. And I thought, and I went to bed. I woke up in the morning; and it was there on the table. I thought, right, that's it. And I so and, I, and I went all out to kind of put put, put it together from from there, sort of thing. I mean, yeah, it was it was, it was first set up in nineteen ninety three when I was I, I did a, I did three nights at Royal Albert Hall with, with with them people, and that was its first outing. So when um, I remember setting up with my tech back then, Lance, and we set up right you know, in, in in the corridor. The, and uh, put it up, and then we over the three nights we sort of tweaked it and tweaked it till it was really stable, and uh, and, and that was it. It's, it's stayed, stayed together ever since, like that. So, <laughs> so it was good, a good, a good first outing. <laughs> yeah, what is next, Kaz? What, what's next, Kaz? <laughs> well, I, I know because I can see that. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know we're gonna we're gonna extend it out. I think you know just to do some weird and wonderful things on the top. Put put some 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 cool, cool, cool lighting ideas around it, but that's that's us for the future, you know. We'd, we'll just we'll just this, this is sort of first base, and we'll just um, see see, maybe some wheels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>